Okay, so we are going to edit our uh, admin panel, and so let's get it running. Um, first, I ran it just to make sure everything was good, but let's I'll show you what we need to do. You want to uh, get your manage.py file running, but you need to have parameters run server um, and then some port number in there. So run server 8000 is what I use just to uh, keep it off of the main port um and ready to go so if we run it now uh, as i ran it before you see we actually have to migrate uh we have to make some migrations and it'll tell you that you have 18 unapplied migrations so let's go back to the terminal and type py manage make migrations like that oops i guess i've already done it uh migrate let's see what happens Okay, we got all the auth ones in there. Um, it looks like we got a, yeah, so it's not, it usually picks up all of them, but let's make migrations and then actually specify the app name so that it gets it in there. So backend. Oops, uh, another thing, my my mistake. So it uh, if we go into settings, we actually have to add this to installed apps. So. Let's put in inventory backend into the installed apps. Now, if we run make migrations by itself, it should pick it up. All right. Ah, read only field must be a list or a tuple. New problem. Let's do that. So I need to make this into a list or a tuple. All right. Now let's try it again. Excellent. So it succeeded and we're going to migrate the database, which is update the database with these migrations and we're done. Now let's see how it runs. We're going to make a uh, manage to probably create super user. So this is going to be our admin account um, and we'll call it admin and no email address and the password and the password. All right. And now let's log into our admin site. Here it is. So log in. Awesome. And now we can see in our admin panel the inventory accounts. We are going to add an inventory account. Let's put a name. Uh, let's say we're saying widgets. So this is our widgets. You can see the sum is a calculated field and it hasn't updated, but we're going to put in a couple transactions. So let's put in a transaction for plus 10, like that, and save it. And if you do, we can look at the widgets account, and it's updated. The sum is updated. So let's say there's another transaction for negative 5. Awesome. You can see now it's keeping track that we bought 10 and we sold 5. And these are getting put in at the uh, date that they're in. Let me um, put that so we can actually see that in the inline. So only fields is going to be created on. And let's see what happens. All right, great. And so uh, we can see when the transaction went in. These both went in pretty uh, close to one another. Um, and we can follow throughout the whole thing. Now, why did I say before, though, that this sum feature is not good? Um, you might be asking, what's the problem with it? Well, uh, the thing is, we have to start to consider uh, uh, how many database transactions we're going to be performing and also, uh, uh, you know, how expensive this computation is once we get into it. So let's say we've made thousands of transactions on this database. We've, uh, or sorry, thousands of inventory transactions. Well, if there's thousands of inventory transactions on this, it's actually going to have to go through uh, all of these um, transactions one by one um, and add them together um, and it's going to have to do that every single time that you want to look at your balance on your inventory so this is not ideal uh, what we really want to do <clears throat> is cache a certain uh, data here right and then uh, keep that data as a field on the inventory account <clears throat> so that 
when the inventory transaction updates, it's going to update that sum, but it's not going to recalculate by calculating all the transactions again. It's just going to adjust it for that particular transaction. So cool. So instead of having sum like a, uh, a calculated field here, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this out, take out that calculated field, and we're actually going to, well, actually, no, we're going to leave it in as a read-only field because we don't want people messing around with it in the admin panel. It's going to be recalculated, but it's not going to be a method. It's not going to be something calculated every time. So we're going to name this sum models, and we're going to do an integer field. It doesn't have to be a float field because, again, we're just doing quantities of integers plus uh, sign. So, um, and then the default of this is when you create it, it's going to be a default of zero. So uh, when you create a new account, inventory account, it's going to have a sum of zero. So we can get rid of this. This is no longer of interest to us. Um, but we have to bring in some logic now down on the transaction. So we have a couple options here. We can actually change the save method of inventory transaction. Um, we have the ability to do what are called uh, uh, flags where, you know, so pre-save and post-save um, um, flags when they happen. Um, but actually this is going to end up being the best way because we need to make one of two things happen here. So if we go and save and we're going to replace this method um, with our new save method. So this is the overwriting the save method. So the first thing we have to do is check if there is, uh, this is a new transaction or not. So if self.pk, which means that it's been assigned a primary key or an ID, then we know that it has been, uh, that this is an item that is something that already has been created. So this is an update of a model. And if it's not, we know that it's a creating a new model because if there's no ID, then the model hasn't been created yet. So if the model's been has not been created yet, then this is pretty easy, right? All we got to do is go to self dot account and sum plus equals self dot quantity and then self dot account dot save. What is this doing? Well, it's taking whatever our sum is, adding the new quantity of this created item, and then saving the account. Excellent. So, very good. But if we have, for example, a model that already exists, we need to subtract its old quantity out and then add back its new quantity in order to make sure that the balance is actually being modified correctly. Now, in order to, <clears throat> to do this, uh, we're actually going to have to replace um, the initialization method on the inventory transactions to keep track of uh, the previous quantity. We want to know what the previous quantity is when it goes to save. Um, otherwise, it doesn't do that. So we need to replace in it like by doing that and, of course, make sure it's actually properly declared. Um, we're going to do a super of the init args and quargs. And then we are going to make sure that we set uh, the attribute to um, the original value. So we're going to do a set attribute. We're going to take the object being self, so the uh, instantiation of this class as an object, and we're going to set the attribute of original quantity to get attribute of self, and we're going to get the quantity. Okay, so that's uh, good so far. So we got, oops, Attribute. Sorry, I need to make it into like that quantity. 
All right, cool. So this should actually get uh, our quantity attribute and set it to an original quantity attribute in our uh, thing. So it should sort of be making a shadow field that looks like this, which is attached to every self object. All right, excellent. So second part, now we are going to check the original quantity every time it saves. Since we changed the models, we have to make uh, another migration. So let's do that real quick. And then I'll update the inventory account. So there we go. Migrate to the database. And there's one last thing I forgot to add in the uh, save method, which we need to call the super uh, save method. So we'll just do that and I'll uh, insert all the arguments that it has. So like so. So that should be at the end of it. All right. And you can see this line here uh, is just testing to see if this is working. And it is indeed. So the original quantity is the pre-save amount and the actual quantity is the amount that's going to be saved. Um, so we can find the difference, right? So difference equals the self.quantity minus self.original quantity. Excellent. And now we know uh, uh, how much. So, okay, let's think about it. So it's like 10 is now the quantity and the original quantity is five. We need to add five more. So we need to add the difference. So instead of sum equals the quantity, we're just going to add the difference and self account save. Or we can actually, so we are not repeating ourselves in get that out of the if then statement like so. Great. And now there's just one last thing we have to consider is what happens when somebody deletes a inventory transaction? Well, we should remove that quantity from the account. Now for this one, we're going to replace the delete method, but I will add with a caveat and say, uh, this is probably not the best idea because a bulk delete is not going to be registered on the delete method. Um, so you are better off with a signal, in this case, a pre-delete signal or post-delete signal. But it's a little bit outside the realm of this particular tutorial. Uh, and since we're trying to be concise, uh, we're just going to go with modifying the delete method. So let's just do this quickly by doing a uh, self delete. So we're going to do super delete so that it actually, this is where it's going to actually do the original method of deleting it. Um, but we can very simply say uh, what is the quantity here before it's deleted. So we say self account the sum minus equals self quantity and self account save. All right. And now we have a system. So instead of recalculating the sum every time that the, you want to get your balance, this is only going to adjust the sum when you delete or add transactions. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, here's our inventory account of widgets. We're going to create a transaction where we add 10 widgets. Awesome. The sum is updated. Now let's say we're going to do a transaction where we sold five widgets. Awesome. The transaction's updated. Whoops, we made a mistake. We didn't sell five widgets. We sold only three widgets. What happens if we update? Excellent. Looking good. And we actually uh, made a mistake entirely. This, this customer canceled their order. So let's delete that. And there we go. Back to 10. Now some parting words. Well, this is not the most airtight of inventory management. So let's say you uh, received 20 units and then you have a bunch of transactions and you want to go back and edit an old uh, transaction, it's not going to tell you if you go into negative uh, on that transaction at some point, you know, so it's not going to say, oh, you can't do that because uh, you would go into negative inventory. It's just a general sum and tally. Um, depending on your needs, you might need something that's ironclad though. Uh, and this is not that, but uh, in uh, its defense, this is something we built in less than half an hour. So uh, as you can see, with some modification, you might be able to build a really cool system with this. And I hope that it was helpful and you found something useful out of this. 
Um, and feel free to reach out to me if you'd like some uh, consultation on your software development for your business. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good one.